could have been this morning, yeah. but they have made a choice to be in the house of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. No, but I was not coerced. I was not forced. I was not promised anything to be here. Amen. It was my free will. Amen. I chose to come yes. in the presence of the Lord. Yes. David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. I'd rather that myself. Hallelujah. So I thank God this morning. I want you to look with me in your Bibles to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14. I'm going to read from verse 22 to 32. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into the sh his ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, Is it a spirit? It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the wall. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous. He was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? When they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. I want to speak to you this morning on the topic the storm is over. There is a handout. Your storm is over. There is a handout. Not a handout. But there is a hand out. Turn you the person next to you and see there is a hand out. Not a handout. <laughs> People don't like handouts, especially West Indians. Am I right? Yeah. West Indians don't like handouts. But there is a handout for you. Not a handout. You got it? Yes. Because of my line of work, I follow the financial markets closely. I follow the trends in the economy. Because it helps me in planning, it helps me in knowing how to advise people correctly in terms of financial planning. Over the last number of years, the last 10 years basically, the economy has been in an upward and downward swing. Sometimes things are doing well, sometimes things seem to be falling apart. In the financial industry, they say when bonds go up, stocks go down. There is an inverse, what is called an inverse relationship. So, 
Sometimes people invest in stocks and when it begins to fail, there is a lot of grumbling. And many times it results in job losses. Several years ago, when the financial markets begin to crumble, many people lost money, people lost jobs. Many people lost everything they saved in investments for years. They lost it. Some committed suicide. Every year the city is saying we're cutting. If we look at what is happening now, subway fare continue going up. And our salaries are going nowhere. When we go to the supermarket, every time we go there, it seems as though something is going up. You know, a few couple of years ago, I looked at Pastor... I, I like sardines, and a can of sardine was 79 cents, and they had about five or six in the can. And one time I bought a sa can of sardines, and there was four, and it was a dollar twenty-nine. And I said to myself, "Who is tricking who?" So you're giving me less, but you're charging me more, and that's what is happening. You go to the gas pump. And every time you go, is a, is a nickel or a dime more you're paying for a gallon of gas. And they tell you if you use your, your credit card, you have to pay more than if you use cash. So somebody is fooling somebody. But this is the age in which we live. And people are, are crying out for help. People are looking for handouts. We pass by soup kitchens and it's no longer as it used to be because there is accountability now. So many of these soup kitchens, they cannot give as they used to because the government is once no accountability in everything that they're giving to them. So time has become tough. Time has become hard. And people are looking for a place of escape, a means of escape in their finances. Rent is going up. An apartment you used to get uh, for, for $1,000, now they're telling you it's $2,000. And what they're doing, many of these apartments, they, if it's a three bedroom, they're converting it into a four bedroom and they're telling you it's more. So every time you look, your pocket is being drained. Services are being reduced. But the cost of these services are going up. And we ask ourselves, what can we do? And in the midst of this, budget cuts from companies, corporations, the city, the state, the government. And we ask ourselves, what is going on? But in the midst of it this morning, you may be at your last hope. Your finances might have been depleted. And you say, Pastor, I can't find a job that will pay me enough to pay my rent. Some people have to use a whole month's check to pay one month rent. And you're saying, Pastor, I am barely making it by true. I don't know what to do again. I'm here to tell you this morning, there is a hand out for you, Amen. Brother David. Yeah. There is a hand that is outstretched for you. Not a handout. Because there are no more handouts. But there is a hand. You see, we have to now shift our gaze from the system to God. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. We have become too much to be relying on the system. Now is the time when we keep our eyes upon Almighty God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Handouts are becoming a thing of the past. Whether 
it is from the government, whether it is from a friend or relative, we must begin to change our attitude. Paul said, be conformed, be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Well, you see, we have become in a place where we learn to depend on people and not upon God. Amen. We have to change our thinking that no, in spite of if Sister Maria gave me, it is God who moved upon her heart Amen. for her Amen. to give me. Amen. So we got to change our thinking, Brother D. Yes. We got to change the way we our thought process and say, listen, it's not the job, but it is God that has kept me on the job. Amen. It is God that is the provider. Too many times we we'll keep our eyes on people and upon things, upon the system, upon our employer. We have to change that attitude. Amen. Because his hand is always outstretched, waiting for you and I to hold on. His hand is outstretched. Hallelujah. We want to look at the text for a moment. Hallelujah. We want to look for a moment at the text. The Bible says, hallelujah, in John chapter 14. Hallelujah. I want to draw your attention to three points that I jot down here. One, they were in a boat. They all were in a common place together. Amen, somebody. Amen. They were all in the same boat. Many of us are in the same boat this morning. You may not know that I'm in the same boat with you, but we are. Amen, somebody. Amen. Because you might be in one compartment, and I am in another compartment, but we are in the same boat together. Amen, somebody. Amen. We all are struggling. We all look, need to look to God. We all want things. We all want to accomplish things. So we are all in the same boat, Sister Phyllis. Amen. Amen. Secondly, they found themselves in the midst of the sea. A common place. Sometimes we find ourselves in places and we ask ourselves the question, how did I get there? Have you ever been in a place like that? Amen. What happened? Did I get myself tied up in this situation? Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. I hope I'm talking to somebody this morning. Amen. Pastor, I don't know what happened, but I get myself into something. Hallelujah. I don't know. I don't want to understand how I got there. But you're there. You're there. So they were in the midst of the sea. Hallelujah. Sometimes we get ourselves in situation. It's like in the midst of the ocean. We look left and there is no help. We look right, we look behind and before us and there is no help in sight. We call and when we, we call the person, we get a voicemail and nobody is available. We're in the midst of the ocean. Hello, am I talking to somebody? Amen, this morning? Mm. I don't know about you, but I've been there. What you're looking at today is not what always had been. Hallelujah. There are times, hallelujah, I have found myself into a situation. I said, John, how did you get there? What happened? Hmm. That is time you stop and you retrospect. And you go before the throne of God. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thirdly, the ship was in a storm. And the word storm in the Greek means torment or to harass, to torture. Storm. Anybody been through a storm? Yeah. Mm, anybody been through a storm? Amen. Hallelujah. You wake up in the middle of the night. Hallelujah. You can't sleep. Hallelujah. That's a storm. Hallelujah. You, you come home from work and there is no peace. Hallelujah. You can't rest. Hallelujah. That's a storm. You've been tormented. Hallelujah. You've been harassed. Hallelujah. There is no peace in your life. 
Sometimes you lose your appetite. Amen. You can't eat because you're so worried. Hallelujah. So much is going on with you that you can't even eat. You've lost your appetite. You begin to go in a depression. I don't want nobody to call me at this time. I'm going through. Am I talking to somebody this morning? A storm. A storm is torment. I don't know how many people here uh, experience a storm in the physical, but it's not a nice thing. You pray God, sometimes it lasts for an hour, but it seems as though it's for an entire day. Storm. They were in the midst of a storm. So three points here. In a boat. Can you imagine? In the middle of the sea. And it's not the big tourist ship that we see sailing. Hallelujah. It was a little craft. Hallelujah. With an open, open out. Hallelujah. That only a handful of people can fit in. So imagine where they were in the middle of the sea in a storm. I want you to reflect on that in your mind's eye. Here are these men sitting in a boat. They look out there and there was, you know, in growing up, the older people always said, be careful when you go in the sea, there, is no, there are no branches there. I didn't understand what they mean until one day I played brave and I went down. And I had to, I tried, thought I could swim. But I couldn't. And it was a time for me to learn to swim. I was forced to swim. Because I played brave by following two other guys. There is no branches, they say. And then I realized what the older people were saying when they say there are no branches out there. But I want us to see something. And even before the disciples were experiencing the turmoil in their life on the sea, and even before they saw Jesus, they were going through their problems. The problem is not unique to you alone. Always remember that what you're going through, somebody had already been there. Amen. Somebody that you don't know, you may not know, is going through the same thing. Amen. So you're not alone. So it is not something new to God, Pastor. It's not something that He's not acquainted with. For the Bible tells us He's familiar. He's acquainted with our griefs and our sicknesses and our sorrow. He's well acquainted. So he's able to take care of what is happening. You might be feeling the effects of the storm more than I am. That's because where you are now. How come only Peter? They all were in the boat. They all were feeling the effects of the storm. But one of them said, Jesus, if it is you, tell me come. Brother Dennis, they all were in the boat. Who will want to? Why didn't Peter say, Jesus, calm the waves? You see, we can be in the same situation together. You and I can be in the same situation. But we can come out of it with different results. Amen. Amen. Go in the boat. But here, Peter, the waves were bellowing. The winds were blowing. But he looked at Jesus. 
I said, Master, if it is you, tell me come. Peter looked at Jesus. The Bible said, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. He looked at Jesus, and in spite of the winds, in spite of the winds, he didn't care about that. He said, Jesus, if it is you, tell me come. So it's in spite of the waves, in spite of the turmoil, you can be in the midst of turmoil. You can be in the midst of heartaches and burdens and grief, hallelujah, and you can come out of it. I have news for you this morning. It does not matter what you're going through. It matters not what, what is circling around you. Jesus has the answer for you. Amen. He can take you through it. He has the ability. He said he has, he's able to keep us. Hallelujah. He's able. He has the ability, the capability. Peter said, if it is you, tell me come. Jesus said one word. Come. Come. And Peter stepped out, did not look at what was going on. Too many times we keep our eyes on the situation. You know what? You know something? Sister Mary, if you keep your eyes on your sickness, you will always be sick. Yes. Hello, somebody. Amen. Amen. If you keep your eyes yeah. on your finances, on your lack thereof, you will always be poor. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I have learned a secret a couple of years ago. Is that forget about the lack of finances. Just give. A few years ago, I, I started just giving and giving. And my sister, I have realized, Sister Alice, that in my giving, I am getting more. Sometimes people give me that, that I never thought people, I, I would do something for somebody and, and say, listen, make, make up what a hundred dollars and they would give me three hundred dollars. They say, listen, I'm give, just giving you. Because I give. And not just financially, but your services. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God, you see, too many times we get caught up that when, when, when the pastor speaks, he only, we, 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 we only believe it should be giving money, but it's not about the dollars. Right. Mm -hmm. right. yes, yes. Amen. It's giving of yourself to God. Amen. Giving of your, your, your time, Amen. your talent. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's what God blessed. He will multiply because the word of God said, He's no man's debtor. Amen. I believe that. I've seen it work. Amen. Jesus said to Peter, Peter, come. <laughs> One word. Peter could have said, but, but the wind. Right, right. Not just as some of us, God said, Go to that company and I have already made it right that you'll get a job. And you say, but uh, I don't have the qualifications. Uh, hello? But it, 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 I need X, Y, Z, but I don't have my papers. God said, go. Yeah. But we, 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 but, 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 brother Dennis. Peter, God, Jesus said, come, Peter. Peter could have said, listen, but Jesus, <laughs> this waves, I, I, I don't know if I could do this. The wind is boisterous, I, I don't know if, if I could do this. But you see, he kept his eyes on Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. He kept his eyes focused, hallelujah, on the mast. And I imagine Peter stepped out of the boat. And I imagine the rest of them looked at him and he said, what kind of madness is that, hallelujah. But he stepped out and he began to walk. But something happened, hallelujah. And that's sometimes where, where we get sidetracked. You know, sometimes we, 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 we well focus, Sister Phyllis. We well focus, Sister Henry. And then suddenly something comes out of the blue. You see, we, the Bible said we must always be mindful of the devices Amen. of the enemy. Amen. 
always be mindful. You see, we, we are not careful of the devices of the enemy because if we are careful when the distractions come, we will know it's from the enemy. Yes. But we, yes. we take it yes. for granted. We relax our guard. Yes. <laughs> we relax. And we are letting, and we are allowing to fool us. Yeah. Peter began to walk. And I imagine the other disciples must have looking at him and said, Boy, is he crazy? Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes when God speaks to you, yeah. there are people that are going to tell you you're crazy, Sister yeah. Patrick. Yeah. Not every time you must tell people what God's speaking to your spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Because they don't understand what God is saying yeah. to you. Yeah. There are sometimes God speak things in my life that I wouldn't discuss with my wife. I would keep it. What the Bible said, Mary pondered in her heart. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. She pondered it in her heart. She didn't tell anybody. She could have told everybody. You see, sometimes we like to speak too much. Amen. <laughs> There's a saying, a still tongue keeps a wise head. Sometimes we need to just zip it Amen. a little bit. Amen. When God speaks things in your life, hallelujah, it's not for you to tell everybody all the time. Sometimes God wants you to just keep it, hold it, and watch Him work. Right. But from the time you begin to tell people, they say, this is not how it's done. Hallelujah. That's not the way you should do it. Hallelujah. And it begins to sow, hallelujah, doubt in your mind. Nothing is going to be accomplished. When God speak it, Brother David, hold on to it. Because trust me, it's going to come true. Amen. I have no question. I, I can put my life on that. When God speak it, it's going to come true. Amen. Amen. It's going to come true. Peter began to walk. But as he began to walk, he got distracted. Like so many of us, mm -hmm. in our walk with God, we get distracted. And once we get distracted, doubt begins to stop. One percent doubt is a hundred percent unbelief. Are you getting me this morning? One percent doubt is a hundred percent unbelief. Once doubt step in, begin to move his eyes from Jesus. And as he began to do that, he saw the waves. He saw the waves that were there when he stepped out. He saw the waves that was there even when he stepped out. But now he began to see. And now he began to question God. Am I going to make it to you, Jesus? Hallelujah. I imagine he looked at the waves and he looked at the sea and he looked at the winds and he, and he was saying, ah, man, I don't know if I'm going to make it. Mm -hmm. Doubt began to step in, sister. The Bible said, he began to sing. But thanks be unto God. You're not going to sing. I bring you good news today. You're not going to sing. Hallelujah. I don't know what you're going through this morning. But I am here to tell you today, hallelujah, you're not going to sink because there is a hand outstretched. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Might be financial. Might be spiritual. Might be economical. Hallelujah. I don't know what you're going through. Hallelujah. But I'm here to tell you today, hallelujah, that there is a hand outstretched. There is a hand out waiting for you. But you must make the move. Hallelujah. You see, God is not like a bulldozer. He will not bulldoze his way into your life. No. But he's waiting for you. His hand is already outstretched. Yes. So what you what are you waiting for? What are you going to? What are you going to do? Disciples, the rest of them stopped, sat in the boat. But Peter was the brave one. He left 
the security and the comfort of the boat. And he said, I want to come to meet you, Jesus. How many of us sometimes God speaking to us spirit and say, Leave where you are. God told Abraham. Abraham was very comforted in his homeland. But God told him, said, Abraham, leave where you are and go someplace where I am going to show you later. And Abraham could have said, well, you got to show me where you want me to go. You see, many times, Sister Patrice, we want to see ahead so that we can make a decision. But God already know what he's doing in your life. God is saying, go up the street, walk towards uh, Church Avenue. But you, you, but you're saying, listen, God, I, I'm going to pass this other way. Like God doesn't know what He's telling you. You know, sometimes we behave with God as though He's a elementary student. Because when He speaks, we always behave as though we have the better plan 